Mars. It's called the Red Planet. It's one of our nearest neighbors in the solar system. It's a planet a lot like Earth in many ways. Now imagine it's 2033. We're about to launch the first mission to Mars. There's a spaceship. There are four astronauts, maybe up to six. How are we going to get there? What are the technologies that we need in order to go to Mars? Well, the answer is in front of you here. It's this small plant called the Rabbitopsis. It will help us build the technologies to go to Mars. In fact, I've used a Rabbitopsis on eight spaceflight missions. I've been very fortunate in this way. How did I get interested in space research? Well, I was born in 1960, and my life is pretty much the space age. NASA was founded in 1959. The first humans were launched into space in 1961. And of course, men landed on the moon in 1969. I remember that quite well. I got to stay up really late, which is really cool for a nine-year-old. And I remember those grainy pictures. And it was fascinating. And ever since then, I've been interested in the space program. It wasn't until after graduate school I was able to combine my interest with botany and the space program and think about things like Mars. So why should we actually go to Mars? It's a huge investment. There's a few reasons I could cite. First, the Earth and Mars are very similar. And there's a lot of things about the Earth that we could learn from Mars. So similarities include Mars has an atmosphere, it has wet weather patterns, it has structural features such as mountains, really big volcanoes, dry riverbeds. At one time, the climate on Mars was moist and warm and things changed. What could this tell us about climate change on Earth? Speaking of climate change, some people think we need to go to Mars to ensure the survival of our species, that eventually we're going to need another planet. Another really fascinating reason to go to Mars is the possibility of life on Mars. There's a lot of evidence for life on Mars, but as far as we know, the only place in the solar system in the universe that we have life for sure is here on Earth. If we were to discover life on Mars, this would be really fascinating. It would actually say that we are not alone. It would have theological and philosophical implications. Speaking of life, there's a very credible theory out there about life actually originated on Mars and came to Earth. So we know in the history of the solar system, there's been lots of transfer of materials between our two planets in the form of rocks or meteors. In fact, one bit of evidence that suggests that Mars was uh, the, or, uh, the original place for life is the conditions there were more favorable for life than on the early Earth. For instance, certain elements and minerals necessary for uh, catalyzing life began there. So this is a really cool concept. Now, if we have life on Mars, what's it going to look like? <laughs> well, it could look like this. Uh, I kind of doubt it because, you know, we have a lot of rovers on Mars and we haven't seen this kind of creature, although there is a theory that they kind of move the cameras around so we don't know. <laughs> but uh, I think it's unlikely. Life on Mars is probably going to be like this. It's going to be microbial. It's going to be like our, our bacteria. This is a beautiful photograph of the Koryov crater on Mars. It's 50 miles wide, 
a mile deep, and it's filled with water in the form of ice. It's a recent picture. I think it was taken in December. One of the mantras at NASA for looking for life is follow the water. And there's actually quite a bit of water on Mars in many locations. We know on Earth where there's water, whether it's freezing cold or whether it's uh, hot springs boiling like at Yellowstone, there is life. Speaking of water, of course, plants need water. So why do we really want to bring plants to Mars? Well, think about the mission to Mars. It's probably going to be about three years. So six months there, six months back, two years on the surface. You could pack all that food. You could ship the food. However, you could grow the food. So the plants are very useful for this. The other thing that plants are very useful for is photosynthesis. So they produce oxygen as a byproduct of photosynthesis, which is beautiful. This is what the animals or the uh, astronauts here need for survival. So the astronauts will breathe in oxygen, cellular respiration, and they give off carbon dioxide, a very beautiful synergistic system. These things are probably obvious to a lot of people. But another reason to have plants going to Mars is psychological benefits to the astronauts. What do I mean by this? Well, think about it. You're kind of in a sterile environment. Um, you have this on the space station. And studies have shown that there's depression among astronauts because of the lack of connection to Earth. Hence, space zucchini. <laughs> so this is astronaut Don Pettit. And I heard him give a talk on this. And he was, uh, he's not a botanist. I think he's an engineer. But he loves space zucchini. What he did was he took some zucchini seeds that were left over either for, from dinner or from an experiment, I'm not sure. And he put them in this baggie, and he grew it on the space station. And it was his pet. He carried it all around with him. <laughs> he wrote a blog about it, The Diary of the Space Zucchini. You could look it up. And it showed you how powerful the plants were for him. And I've talked to maybe about a dozen astronauts, and they love doing the plant experiments because of this connection to Earth. You may have heard about plants on Mars in this movie, The Martian. And here is uh, Mark Watney, and he is uh, growing these uh, potato plants. And Matt Damon did a good job. This movie was a fictional account. There's a lot of interesting things in it, but I really like one part of it. So, he portrayed, um, he was a botanist. Now, most of us know, and I'm a botanist, so I could say this, botanists are probably not much fun. Um, <laughs> perhaps they're a bit nerdy. But to see the botanist as a hero, in fact, he was the greatest botanist on this planet. <laughs> this is why I love the movie. Now, they talked about a lot of things in that movie, um, and some of these are challenges of going to Mars. And these are things like, first of all, we need a big rocket. Right now, we do not have this big rocket, but we need that to escape low Earth orbit. Radiation effects are very severe. The radiation levels on the surface of Mars and on the trip there are much more intense. We have to find countermeasures. Human physiology changes a lot, even in microgravity, the trip there and the trip back. We know, for instance, astronauts lose 1% of their bone density per month. And this is pretty serious. Life support systems, the plants will help us with this. But really, the focus of my research, the focus of research in my lab, is biology in reduced gravity. So the gravity levels on Mars are less than what they are on Earth. And why is this? 
Well, we have a whole gravity continuum here. We have microgravity in low Earth orbit or on the deep space trip to Mars. The gravity level on Earth, by definition, is 1G. So gravity is actually attraction between objects. If we have a smaller object, such as the moon, the gravity level is less. It's 1,6G. Now, some of us know about this. Think back about those grainy pictures of the astronauts on the moon. They're running around the moon, jumping around. They have a 300-pound backpack on. Try doing that on Earth. That's, that, that's pretty tough. Mars is a bigger planet. There's a higher gravity level. So let me put this another way. If you, we look at the average adult American male, I think he weighs 190 pounds, uh, unfortunately. Um, <laughs> on, the, on the moon, he would weigh 32 pounds. On Mars, he would weigh 72 pounds. Now I could see I got a lot of people interested in going to Mars. <laughs> So we looked at plants at these different gravity levels. This is our humble space plant, Arabidopsis. It's a small plant, as you can see, in the mustard family. It grows um, uh, easily. Some might call it a weed. It produces a lot of seeds. This uh, one plant could produce three or 4,000 seeds. But what's interesting is it develops in the same way as crop plants. So whatever we learn about this plant, could apply to things like the potatoes or tomatoes or, or lettuce. Here's a summary of our recent experiment on the International Space Station. First of all, it was launched on the SpaceX vehicle, and you see this time-lapse video of these little seedlings or plants developing. I am studying phototropism. You all know about phototropism. You may not know the word, it's the tendency of plants to grow toward light. You know this, like we have this plant, it's on a windowsill, it'll bend toward the light, you gotta rotate it around. So um, people are kind of familiar with this. So we study phototropism, first of all, microgravity, the absence of gravity, and we've got an amazing result. Red light is coming from the left side of the screen, and we see that the stems and the roots are bending toward red light. This does not happen on Earth in 1G. It was a new discovery we made. Now, why is this important? Well, let's start thinking about Mars. What's really nice is we have this International Space Station, and on the space station, we have a device called, or devices called centrifuges. They spin around and they create artificial gravity. So we could study the moon and Mars levels to get ahead of ourselves. So when we do this experiment in microgravity, what we see is that the plants will bend toward the red light. You know this, I just mentioned it. If we increase the gravitational acceleration to 1,6 G, exact same response. The plants will respond to the red light. But what's really cool and interesting is when we increase the gravity level to 3 eighths G, to the Mars level, the plants are insensitive to the red light. They won't respond. This is exactly the same result as on Earth. This is a really cool and useful result. What this tells us is that if we're growing plants on Mars, the gravity level is not going to be the problem. Now, there may be problems on the moon, but the response is the same as on the moon and Earth. So there's lots of problems. There's lots of problems of growing plants uh, in greenhouses on Mars. But the gravity is not a problem. And I think this has been one of the most interesting aspects of our recent research. To summarize, we need to go to Mars for a few reasons. We need to learn more about the Earth. More importantly, perhaps, we need to see if there's life there. Life may have started on Mars. Look around this room. We all may be Martians. There's lots of challenges we have. It will be very difficult. We need the big rocket. We need to understand radiation. We need to understand life support. However, gravity per se 
is not going to be a problem. And this is really good news. So the next time you're out on a summer evening and you look to the sky and you see Mars, Mars is readily visible with the naked eye. It has a reddish hue. You could actually see it in this picture. It'll look pretty much like this. You could see Mars, and if you compare it to another planet, in this case it's Jupiter, you could see that very pretty red U. It's very distinctive. You know it's Mars. When you find Mars, think that humans are going to be going there in the next 15 to 20 years. Think that this humble plant may help us to get there. And think that we actually may be going toward home. 